Hello there, everyone. In this module, we'll be discussing the descent of the gonads. Let's have a quick introduction. By the end of the second month of gestation, the gonads in the mesonephris are anchored to the posterior abdominal wall. With the degeneration of the mesonephris, the remaining mesentery forms the cranial suspensory ligament and the gubernaculum. The cranial suspensory ligament anchors the gonads to the diaphragm and the gubernaculum drives their descent towards the scrotum or the labia majora, the derivatives of the genital swellings. To explain in simple language, the descent of the gonads is the process of the migration of the testes caudally from their initial retroperitoneal location through the inguinal ring into the scrotum or the migration of the ovaries caudally to the pelvic rim. On the gestational timeline, Gonadal descent is complete by week 33. Here's the mechanism of the descent of the testes. The testes develop in relation to the lumbar region of the posterior abdominal wall. During fetal life, they gradually descend to the scrotum. They reach the iliac fossa during the third month and lie at the site of the deep inguinal ring up to the seventh month of intrauterine life. They pass through the inguinal canal during the seventh month and are normally in the scrotum by the end of the eighth month. Some factors affecting the descent of the testes are differential growth of the body wall and the formation of the inguinal bursa. Around the sixth month of intrauterine life, the various layers of the abdominal wall of each side show an outpouching toward the scrotum. This pouch progressively increases in size and depth and eventually reaches the bottom of the scrotal sac. Note that the pouch is formed before the testes enter the inguinal pouch. The cavity of the inguinal bursa becomes the inguinal canal, while various layers of its wall form the coverings of the testes and the spermatic cord. Another factor that affects the descent of the testes is the gubernaculum. The gubernaculum induces intra-abdominal migration. This is a band of mesenchyme which extends from the lower pole of the testes to the scrotum. When the embryo increases in size, the gubernaculum does not undergo a corresponding increase in length. Thus, there is a relative shortening of the gubernaculum, and as a result, the testes assume a progressively lower position. The gubernaculum helps to dilate the inguinal bursa, which provides a continuous pathway for the descending testes. Another factor is the processus vaginalis. This is a diverticulum of the peritoneal cavity which actively grows into the gubernacular mesenchyme of the inguinal canal and of the scrotum. While descending, the testes invaginate the processus vaginalis from behind. After the descent of the testes is completed, the processus vaginalis loses all connection with the peritoneal cavity and becomes the tunica vaginalis. The last factor affecting the descent of the testes is that it is greatly influenced by hormones secreted by the pars anterior of the hypophysis cerebri. Increased intra-abdominal pressure supports the passage of the testes through the inguinal canal. With the regression of the gubernaculum, the migration of the testes to the scrotum is complete. Let's take a look at the clinical link of this process. The gubernaculum is a fibrous tissue that aids in the descent of the gonads. It develops around week seven and exists in males until the descent of the testes into the scrotum is complete, typically by week 33. In males, the gubernaculum anchors the testes within the scrotum, named the scrotal ligament. If defective, it is associated with cryptorchidism and testicular torsion. In females, it forms the ovarian ligament, that is, the round ligament of the uterus. If dysfunctional, it can cause abdominal translocation of the ovaries. Processus vaginalis is an evagination of the peritoneum that accompanies the testis into the scrotum before closing. In males, it becomes a remnant known as the tunica vaginalis. A failure to close or patent the processus vaginalis is more common on the right side, and is associated with hydrocele, indirect inguinal hernia, and scrotal hematocele. If defective, it is associated with testicular torsion. In females, the processus vaginalis is completely obliterated. 
If there is a patent processus vaginalis, then it is called the canal of Nuck. Thank you for listening to this module about the descent of the gonads.